On this episode of K0MRD Radio Prepper Podcast, we will discuss the three levels of amateur radio license, why amateur radio ops love NOAA, and the ARRL. We'll get right into it directly after the intro. Solar charger just stopped Hello working. and welcome to the podcast. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper, and I'm here with a new podcast and I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be discussing communications for preppers and everybody else that's interested. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. There are three levels of amateur radio license in the USA. They are technician, general, and amateur extra. There are grandfathered licenses, but I'll go, I'll not go into them here. If you're interested in what those are, the information can be found on the FCC website, FCC.gov, under amateur radio service. Since I'm talking to potential new amateur radio ops, I'm just going to stick with the current license levels. The technician license. The privileges for a technician class operator license include operating on an amateur station that may transmit on channels of any of the 17 frequency bands above 50 MHz with up to 1,500 watts of power. To pass the technician class examination, you you need to answer at least 26 questions correctly out of the 35 questions on the exam. The technician license... Licensees also have privileges in four amateur amateur radio bands in the HF range from 3 to 30 megahertz. This is the first step in the amateur radio world. The exam is not at all difficult and it takes a bit of studying on your part. There are practice exams you can take and I'll give you a list of those later on. The tech exam goes over the basics, regulations, operating practices, electronics theory, with a focus on VHF and the general class operator license authorizes privileges on all 29 amateur service bands. Upon accreditation by a volunteer examiner coordinator, or VEC, an individual can help administer certain examinations. In addition to the written requirement for the general class operator, that is a 35-question written exam, which you will need to answer 26 questions correctly. This is the license that I currently hold. It gives me privileges on all HF bands, but I primarily use 20 meter and occasionally 40 meters. I use a 20 meter band because it's not seasonally dependent, meaning it can be used all year long. The one drawback is that it is daylight dependent. It's best used two to three hours before sunrise until two to three hours after sunset. The 40 meter band works similarly, but one to two hours after sunset until one to two hours after sunrise. The two bands complement each other in that one is good during the daytime, the other is good at night, giving the amateur radio operator 24-hour communication opportunity. The technician and general score, passing score for a test, is 74%. Again, that's 26 of the 35 questions that you have to get correct. The amateur extra license This is the top of the amateur radio food chain, and something that can be aspired to. I'm studying for the amateur extra test in what little time I, what little spare time I have. I don't know if I'll ever take the exam, as I'm comfortable at the general level. But who knows what the future holds, right? 
privileges for an amateur extra class operator license include additional spectrum in the HF bands. In addition to the two above written exams, the requirement for an amateur extra class operator license includes answering at least 37 questions of a 50 question examination. Again, the passing score for Amateur Extra is 74%. The cost of the new license has gone up recently from $15 per exam session to $35. This caused some controversy recently as many radio operators are upset with this change. Some even thought that there should be no charge at all for the Amateur Radio license as we perform a service. The FCC wanted to charge $50 for any new upgraded license, any administrative changes such as address, email address, and name change. The ARRL fought this and as a compromise was reached. Along with the new license costing $35, the cost of the GMRS license was dropped from $70 to $35, opening up yet another form of communication for radio operators. These licenses are good for 10 years, so it breaks down to about $3.50 a year. It's not that bad if you think, it, think of it that way. Per the ARRL, the $35 application fees apply to new, renewal, rule waiver, and modification applications that request a new vanity call sign. The fee is per application. Administrative updates, such as a change of name, mailing, or email address, and modification applications to upgrade an amateur radio license operator class or to request a sequentially issued call sign are exempt from these fees. What that means is, if you are a technician and you want to go up to general, it will not cost you another $35 to do that. Did you know that you could take amateur radio exams one of two ways? Thanks to the COVID-19 outbreak, some amateur radio groups decided to offer exams online via Zoom. This afforded the opportunity for those who wanted to take exams but did not want to risk catching COVID the ability to do so. With the spread of COVID declining, amateur radio groups started to slowly make face-to-face -face testing an option again. Now we have the option to take the exams online with various rules that go along with them or in person. Whichever you choose, I would encourage you to do so. You can either take the exam session type linked at the ARRL's website, which is http colon backslash backslash www.arrl.org slash online hyphen exam hyphen session. There are free exam practice tests that can be found at the following web addresses. And that's hamradioprep.com, hamstudy.org, and the ARRL examreview.appspot.com. The last one requires a sign-up to use. Amateur radio operators really love NOAA. And NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. NOAA was established by President, by President Nixon and Congress in 1970 under the Reorganization Plan No. 4. President Nixon sent the Reorganization Plan to Congress on July 9, 1970. NOAA was created to serve a national need to, quote, or for, quote, better protection of life and property from natural hazards, for a better understanding of the total environment, and for exploration and development leading to an intelligent use of our marine resources, end quote. It became effective on October 3, 1970, 
under 5 U.S.C. 906. The establishment of major parts of NOAA can be traced back to the 1800s, including the Fisheries Commission in 1871, the Weather Bureau in 1870, and the Survey Office of the Coast Guard in 1807 by visionary President Jefferson. As such, NOAA is the oldest scientific agency in the United States, and the 200th anniversary of NOAA was celebrated in 2007. All NOAA weather radio stations broadcast on one of seven frequencies in the VHF public service band. That's 162.400 megahertz, 16.24 megahertz, 162.50 megahertz, 162.475 megahertz, 162.500 megahertz, 162.525 megahertz, and finally 162.550 megahertz. This is the one that my radios are tuned to. Your Bofang UV5R or variant can be programmed with these frequencies in order to monitor any severe weather in your area. Now the question is, why do amateur radio ops love NOAA? There are many amateur radio ops who become weather spotters or storm chasers and the like, all for their own reasons. Myself, I became a spotter because I live in Tornado Alley in the Midwest. I wanted to be able to know when one or two tornadoes were forming, as was this case this past late winter, early spring. It happened on March 5th, 2020. As noted by NOAA, the largest tornado moved across Madison, Warren, Polk, and Jasper counties in Iowa for nearly 70 miles, and at its peak produced winds of 170 miles per hour. This was the first EF4 tornado in Iowa since October 4th, 2013, which occurred in Woodbury and Cherokee counties. While my home was not affected, other than losing power for a short time, others I know had their houses decimated by the funnel of doom. While this was happening, I was on my 2-meter radio passing info along on a weather net set up for the storm, as is the case during all severe weather alerts. By a gentleman's agreement, one of the local repeaters is left open to all amateur radio operators affected in order to pass along any updates on health, safety, and storm movements. Having the ability to receive information about lo the local situation as well as get for information out gives me a peace of mind that I would otherwise not have were it not for the fact that I am an amateur radio op. Hence, why we love it. It's amazing. The ARRL has been around since April 6, 1914, and it is the largest amateur radio association in the United States. They represent all interests of amateur radio operators in the U.S. before Congress and the FCC. The League does this by lobbying before those asture groups. Besides providing technical assistance and supporting many educational programs, the League also supports emergency communications across the U.S., and this is why I decided to join so I can learn how to handle radio traffic of health and welfare during times of communication disruptions. I'm glad I can count myself among the 161,000 ARRL members in the U.S. The League offers a lot of service for its members. For instance, if you're all about long-distance communications or DXing, the League operates outgoing and in coming QSL bureaus so you can send out and receive those cool QSL cards from your DX contacts. The ARRL VEC, that's the Volunteer Examiner Coordinator, 
sponsors the amateur radio license exams for all three classes of U.S. amateur radio license. I became a VE so that I can help bring new amateur radio ops in for testing sessions. If contesting is your thing, the ARRL sponsors many contests over amateur radio throughout the year. The biggest being the November Sweepstakes and the International DX Contest. Information on these and many other contests can be found on the ARRL website. I feel that membership in the ARRL is a positive step that any amateur radio operator can take, not just for the educational or technical aspects, but because they actually stand up for us in Congress and to the FCC, as mentioned earlier. And that alone is worth membership, in my humble opinion. You have just listened to the K0MRD Radio Prepper Podcast with your host, K0MRD. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play to catch our next episode. Thanks for taking the time to listen. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper, signing off, 7-3.